Hey guys, it's Mandy Ezzel, back with another Ezzel and the Vanity Weekly Card Fight Reveals. So I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. And let's get this one started. Today's, I mean, this week's uh, reveals. First off, we didn't really get any reveals up until Saturday, I think, or Sunday. And then after that, we actually got some reveals. So this week's kind of lacking in reveals in terms of numbers. But there was an interesting reveal of the Token Rambu start deck. I'm pretty sure we actually got all of the Token Rambu start deck, actually, now that I think about it. But let's go ahead and take a look at the entire week of reveals. First up, we have Rough Eating Dragon Hunger Zarus. 10k base, grade 2, intercept, 5k shield, dragon empire for overdress. Continuous rear during your turn. This unit gets plus 5k power, and if your opponent has a front row rear guard, it cannot attack the van. So obviously this is meant to be used for like Eugene to give you incentive to murder the front row rear guards. Or even if you don't, you can just murder the back row rear guards and swing at this with this thing for 15 because it's a guaranteed plus 5. So that's already a 5k drop guaranteed regardless. And if you're at grade 2, it's another 10k. So it's a really good card for a grade 2 rush. And with my playtesting of Eugene, I feel like you need to get the rush off early for Eugene considering that like, your opponent is going to just be able to constantly call out their units more and more, even if you do just murder them and it slows them down a bit. So I say like a rush is really good to have with Eugene, especially in like grade one area, maybe grade two. So having this thing that's just a 15K guaranteedly, and they're most likely not gonna have front more rear guards. So having a 15K swing, a 10K drop in a rush turn, really good. So I say good card. Next up, we've got Flame Priestess Mirren, 6K base, 5K shield, grade one. Auto rear, when, you're over, when your unit with overdress attacks, put this unit to soul, choose one of your units with overdress, and it gets plus 5k power kind of turn. So that's like a nice vanguard booster. Yeah, 6k is not that much. It's basically the standard power of a starter. But most of the time, your front row is going to be overdress units, with Nirvana being the exception. So you normally would just swing with Nirvana anyways because of its on attack skill to give them more power. Then you use Mirren skill, and one of them swings to shove to soul, and the unit gets more power. And you most likely put it on a Varina Valiente, just so it's harder for them to guard, and it increases the chances of it restanding. So, you know, very helpful card. It also gives you soul, and the deck does soul blast with Varina. Granted, I don't think a lot of people even use Varina. I think you literally keep him in hand until you see Varina Valiente call Varina if you don't overdress it onto Trickstar. Then you just overdress it there, and then after that, it just doesn't have any other purpose. But, you know, sometimes you got to give him his thing because he can retire and he gets a free plus 10. So sometimes he'll shine and this card can help it make it shine. So I'd say like maybe three or four. Next up, we've got uh, for Dark States, actually. Grade two, Diablos Boys Jared, intercept, 5k shield, 10k base, uh, act rear guard once per turn. Counter boss one, soul boss one, choose one of your units with, Diab with Diabolos or Diablos in its card name. And this unit gets plus 10k power until end of turn. And then act rear during the battle that this unit attacks. If you are in final rush, your opponent cannot intercept. So something with Diabolus and his card name gets plus 10k power. This benefits me personally as a player because I'm one of the people where I don't like to take things out of their archetype or things that have similar naming. Like, for example, I am not changing my trigger lineups for any of my overdress decks for the sole reason because... I don't want to shove in random things with each other. For example, I refuse to shove Cardinal Fang triggers into an over into a Aurora Battle Princess deck and vice versa. And despite the fact that Dark States is one of the very few decks I'm more or less fine with doing because art-wise it looks similar, I don't want to do it because all of the triggers for uh, Bruce all have Diabolos in its card name, so I don't want to swap over the triggers. And this benefits it because that gives something with that card name plus 10 and the triggers have it So people like me can benefit from this card straight up four copies for me in general And you can just pick itself, but either way it's a free plus 10 to something And then act rear and I already said that sorry you get a free just stop the opponent from intercepting I don't really think that's that important because normally your opponent is either going to like block the thing that can restand with double crit that being a uh, Eden or they're just going to I guess just take this. I'm not so sure why they did the intercept, but that's good. And it also gives uh, Final Rush decks more grade 2 engine because before our best grade 2 was Eden, and granted that's a good grade 2, but if you don't see Eden, you're kind of just stuck with the grade 3s, and you kind of need some grade 2s for firepower, and not a lot of people like me run Anger Richard, so, you know, this actually adds something to it. So I think it's a 4 copy of, or maybe a 3, no less than 2. Next up, we've got Degraded Age Dragon, also for Dark States, Grade 1, Boost, 5k Shield, AK Base, 
Auto, when it's placed on rear, if you have five or more cards in soul, discard one, retire one of your opponent's back row rear cards. I like how most of the Dark States cards, they're all just kind of vague of what deck you can use them with, because Dark States in general has been the deck where you shove stuff to soul. Everything else has been kind of different. Bastion straight up focuses on grade threes. Hexa Orb does nothing involved with that. They just focus on trigger stacking like Oracle Think Tank does. Um, Overdress is just, you know, focused on actually overdressing your units, while Eugene focuses on retiring the opponent's units. Um, where was I going with this? Uh, Aurora Battle Princess focuses on imprisoning units. Cardinal Dias just focuses on spamming out shadow tokens. Magalinolia just focuses on pumping out a field and multi-attacking with said field. And Zorga also, I guess, focuses on pumping out a field, but not multi-attacking, but hitting bigger numbers. So, it's nice that, like, Dark State's kind of the one where their skills match up, actually, because... Dark States, either way, you're having a lot of souls, so most of their cards you can kind of filter out in between. Like, there are certain cards, like, you can only use this in Final Rush decks, or if you have 10 or more soul. And even the 10 or more soul one, you can, to some extent, use in Bruce. I have had 10 or more soul at some point. So, it's a really nice card to have, because it can just murder an opponent's back or rear guard that they might be protecting. And that actually hurts against me, by the way, because when I play Bastion, I like to shove my Dark Stain Dragon into the back row, because some people will use cards that just either send stuff to the bottom in a column and you won't send something that's only one card to a column and you can send two cards in a column back so i like to keep them in the back row and this thing actually hurts me dearly because it only targets one so there's no reason to not pick it next up we've got aqua force for uh v series this is not the correct name by the way i'm 90 percent sure there's already a card named brave shooter but if there isn't then this is what this card's name is uh, is either called Brave Shooter or Violent Shooter, whatever the Google Translate thing gave me. 9k base, 5k shield, grade 2 intercept. Auto rear at the end of the battle that it attacked a vanguard. If it's the first battle that turn, counterblast 1, put it to bottom, look at top 3, and call a card. So, pretty much get another free attack out of it. It's good. My only thing with this is that I hate that Aqua Force has a lot of cards that focus on, like, first battle, and there are some that I value more than others. This is one of the ones that I don't value, because I feel like Algos is better, because yeah, you're deck thinning with this one, but at the same time, who says you won't see three triggers when you're doing this, and then you forcefully just lost yourself a trigger while proceeding to just send a normal unit back to deck, so not really my type of card, but hey, it's still okay. Next up, we got another card that I was also Google Translated, so don't mind the name. Uh... Danger Phantom Staving Red. I swear to God, if that's the name, I'm paying whoever made Google Translate 60 bucks on the dot. Grade 2, Mega Colony, 9k base, 5k shield for V series again. Auto, when they're placed on banner rear, counterblast 1, choose one of your opponent's rear guards without a cradle marker, cradle it, and if you di couldn't choose a card, draw a card. It continues banner rear during your turn. If your opponent has a rear guard with a cradle marker on it, this unit gets plus 6k power. <laughs> so that's good. They're finally giving us more cradle support. Honestly, sir, why I'm saying finally when they when their second to last set, if you don't count if you count V series premium collection had cradles in it, but it's good we're getting more cradle support. They lock down your opponent's circles and make them useless. You get a free draw and it can get power out of it. So I say a pretty good card to run. I say like maybe three or four. And now on to today's main reveals, token Rambo. So I before I get started with this. I've always been interested in the Arch of Token Rambo because they always have swords, and if you know me at all, then my favorite weapons just in general, if you, if I could pick my weapons were in any video game, would be either dual pistols or dual swords because I don't know why I'm just into dual things and I'm into those two in particular. And I always want to play Token Rambo, but my problem is I don't like playing crossover decks. I don't know why, even if they're simple to build or they're simple to play, I just have a thing against crossover decks. So if someone can read, if someone gets this far, can you put down in the comments or not if this is actually a crossover deck? Because it's making me suffer that it's cool looking and that I can't use it if it isn't, if it is a crossover deck. So if it is a crossover deck, tell me please. And if it's not, also tell me so I can stop suffering. So anyways, on to actual cards. We got Ka Kashu... Kiyo Mitsu, 6k base, 5k shield, grade 0 boost. It's the standard starter when it's rode upon. If you want second, you get to draw a card. Nothing special except the fact that it kind of looks like the grade 2. Next up, grade 1, Kashu Kiyo Mitsu Sento. Do not bully me for not knowing these names. I am sorry. I do not know how to pronounce these. So excuse me if I butcher them. 8k base, 5k shield, grade 1 boost. 
Auto when this unit is rode upon by Kashu Kiyomitsu Toku. Look at the top card, put it at the top of deck, or put it into your soul. That continues rear during your turn, it gets plus 2k power. So that's just a free 2k. That's honestly really good because there are cards that just said on attack, give plus 2. Um, on boost, give plus 2. Pay X amount of counter blast, give plus 2. If you remember those cards, congratulations to you from like the very olden days. But this just gives you a free plus two for being on rear. So that's always just really good. It's a free one. And, you know, the standard, if it's rode upon by the next card on the ride line, do a thing. You get to stack the top cards up for early rush, maybe, or you get an extra soul. I have a problem with these things where half their skill is useless if you don't ride on top of the ride line, where there's not really a point in having the grade two or grade three, grade two or grade one of the ride line, because they all focus on, like, riding off each other. The only one that has the exception to that would technically be Bruce to some extent. But, like, Bruce still needs it just to get the full abilities off. But if you're playing with the starter with Forerunner, technically you don't. So, eh, on that front. But, like, why? Next up we have Kashu Kiyomitsu Toku. 10k base, 5k shield, grade 2 intercept. Auto when it's rode upon by Kashu Kiyomitsu Kiwame. That is probably wrong, and I'm going to get the next one wrong, too. Search your deck for up to one Yama Tono Kami Yasuda. I reveal it, add it to your hand, and shuffle your deck. So, you know, you get a free search for what I'm going to assume is the main grade 2 of this deck, considering that there's a card that searches for it. And then continuous rear during your turn. It gets another plus 2. So, you just put these two in a column. It's a 22k swing. That's its immediate, like, 10k guard. And if you're playing premium and they're using a Protector and Excel deck, you know, that's a 15k guard. So, it's a good card, I guess. And finally, we, well, not finally, but next up we have Yama Tono Kami Yasuda, Suda. 10k base, 5k shield, grade 2, intercept, act, rear guard, counter blast 1. For this turn, it gets plus 5k power. And if your vanguard is Kashu Kiyomitsu Kiwame, plus 10k power instead of plus 5. So, you know, it's a guaranteed plus 5 for a counter blast. And then you get another plus 10 just by having the main grade 3 on van, which you're guaranteed in standard. So, it's a helpful grade 2. It can get you power. And finally, our main grade 3, Kashu Kiyomitsu Kiwame. Thank God I don't have to say any of these names anymore. 13k base, Persona Ride, Twin Drive, grade 3, Continuous Van during your turn. If you do not have any face-up cards in your damage zone, it gets plus 10k power. So, now we have a new alt mile. We now have a new alt mile, which I found fun in a deck that I cannot use because I'm 90% sure this is a crossover deck. The hell. And then act re van once per turn. Counter boss one, soul boss one. Look at the top card. Put it at top or bottom and draw a card. So, you know, you basically just get a free top deck stack and a free draw out of it. So, like, either way, you could either just send a uh, trigger to bottom just to fuck with someone because you're not going to see something. Or you could send a normal unit to bottom to make them... Um, think that uh wait no what was my point with this i have no idea but basically just get a free draw out of it and you can effectively stack that draw my only problem with this is that oh this is not a once per turn never mind i was about to say this is a once per turn so you can't fully benefit off this but you can because of the no damage zone thing so this card's i guess really good my only problem with it is it just feels like it's missing something but in the start deck or at least i think it was the start deck that decided it was I believe they are getting their own special over trigger straight from the start deck. So, if depending on what that over trigger does, you know, this card could be a lot more powerful. Or this deck could be a lot more powerful. It just looks like so far right now we're doing a lot of deck stacking, and well, not a lot, but like a good amount of deck stacking and just being an alt mile. So, it's a just a so called med deck for now, and we'll see where it goes. I have faith in its potential. And that was kind of this week's reveals. Uh, they were kind of bad because I honestly didn't really expect anything from them. Because normally I have like a week in advance to assume what I'm going to do. But I did not have a week in advance this time because I was really busy. And then we didn't get much reveals until Saturday. So I didn't have much time to prepare. So yeah, I pretty much prepare all my things in like weeks in advance. Which is why half my videos are recorded like a long time before people start saying anything. So if I ever say I'm gonna shout you out, I probably will, but I probably won't be in, like, the actual following video. It'll probably be a video three weeks in advance, because that's not gonna happen. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, 
comment so you know you can comment any deck you want to see me build any like help that you need building decks because apparently i'm good at helping people now or like any time you want to fight me because i actually will accept a fight challenge to the death and subscribe so you know just so i can uh, grow my channel bigger and the community bigger and my second channel is in the description below which focuses on beyblade so you can go subscribe to that as well uh i have a discord uh yeah, I have a Discord, so you can go uh, join that. I have a Twitch, so you can go follow that, which I will eventually stream to once I find the time to do that. And I have a Patreon, as I've been saying, so go donate to that so I can actually buy half these things. And I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to stand up your vanguards. <laughs>